fellow panelists, uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, first of all, uh, let me welcome you all, all to this uh, House of Estates, uh, which uh, has a certain particular place in the history of uh, economic policy of uh, Finland, uh, because uh, in 1992-93, uh, we were very close uh, to being in the guardianship of, uh, of the IMF. Uh, and in this house, uh, we did uh, in one year, I think, uh, four budgets. Uh, we revised uh, the budget uh, four times uh, through expenditure cuts uh, and uh, through tax increases, uh, through tax reforms, uh, and uh, through, uh, uh, boosting, uh, th through measures uh, boosting economic uh, growth. Uh, which helped uh, us uh, to avoid uh, an IMF program and uh, helped uh, to pave the way for restoring competitiveness and uh, relatively good period of uh, economic uh, growth uh, from the mid-1990s uh, onwards. Dear friends, uh, let me first uh, thank uh, the Center of uh, European Studies uh, for organizing this uh, conference on such an important uh, subject as uh, economic uh, ideas, uh, growth and uh, competitiveness uh, Knowing the connections uh, of uh, CES uh, to the European People's Party, I also want to use this uh, opportunity to thank uh, the EPP for the very good cooperation over the past years uh, in uh, both uh, firefighting the crisis uh, and uh, rebuilding the architecture of uh, the economic and uh, monetary union. We have thus uh, together done the groundwork uh, for a stronger EU economy our current challenge uh, is to build on the stability that has, uh, has been achieved uh, and uh, boost uh, sustainable growth uh, and uh, job creation. There are in fact uh, two ways of uh, looking at the European economy uh, today. The first one is that uh, the short-term outlook, uh, economic outlook uh, for Europe uh, is uh, still weak, uh, negative, at best uh, dualistic. Uh, but uh, the other one is that uh, the underlying trend uh, is that uh, the rebalancing of uh, the Eurozone or European economy is uh, currently underway. This rebalancing is uh, indeed uh, necessary after the, after the accumulation of uh, large and uh, unsustainable economic uh, imbalances. Uh, the still very high levels of uh, public and uh, private debt uh, in many member states uh, need to be reduced uh, in order for a stronger recovery to take uh, hold. At the same time, the repair of the banking sector needs to be completed. As a sign of uh, rebalancing, current account uh, imbalances uh, are being reduced uh, in the euro area, for instance, in Italy, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, uh, and uh, Greece. And uh, the overall euro area current account uh, is uh, moving into surplus. It is now essential that uh, the rebalancing and uh, reforms uh, are pursued with uh, determination in all member states, uh, both uh, in the deficit countries, uh, like uh, those I mentioned, uh, that will need to boost uh, their competitiveness, uh, while surplus countries uh, like uh, Germany will need to do more to further remove obstacles uh, to grow growth uh, of their domestic uh, demand. That's uh, the best way of uh, improving the overall economy of, uh, of the Eurozone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the essence of uh, the country-specific uh, recommendations uh, that uh, the Commission issued uh, last week uh, for each and every member state uh, under the European semester. In view of the protracted uh, recession and uh, high unemployment uh, in many parts of Europe, uh, we must uh, indeed uh, do whatever it takes uh, to overcome the unemployment uh, crisis. The EU's uh, policy mix uh, focuses on uh, sustainable growth uh, and uh, improving employment. Uh, in fiscal policy, the consistent uh, consolidation of uh, public finances uh, is uh, continuing, even though at a slower pace uh, than before, which uh, fits to the current uh, economic uh, con context, uh, while ensuring medium-term uh, fiscal sustainability. I don't want to bore you with uh, figures, but uh, there is one important uh, figure in this regard, uh, which uh, shows that uh, we are still continuing consolidation, 
but doing it uh, with a somewhat uh, slower pace uh, to take uh, the negative impact on growth uh, into account. Uh, this year, the structural fiscal effort uh, will be three, three quarters uh, percent of GDP in the euro area, which is uh, half of uh, last year's uh, figure of uh, one and a half percent of uh, GDP in the euro area. And it shows that uh, we are indeed uh, somewhat slowing down the pace of uh, fiscal consolidation. You may ask uh, what has made this uh, smoother, more gradual path uh, of uh, fiscal adjustment uh, possible. Three factors, uh, essentially. First, uh, the increased uh, credibility of uh, fiscal policy of uh, EU member states uh, that has been achieved uh, since uh, 2011. Second, uh, the decisive action by the European Central Bank uh, to stabilize uh, the financial markets. And uh, third, uh, the reform of uh, EU economic governance, uh, which now provides uh, an effective uh, medium-term framework uh, for a gradual fiscal adjustment uh, and uh, supporting structural reforms. Despite this uh, gradualism, fiscal consolidation needs to continue until the member states have achieved a structurally balanced budget. Sustainable growth cannot be built by piling new debt over old debt. In this sense, there is no radical change in fiscal policy underway, as suggested by some pundits. To paraphrase former US President John Quincy Adams, I see no, no change in policy, only in circumstances. Sound public finances do go hand in hand with sustainable growth. Ladies and gentlemen, as Alex Stubb rightly underlined, structural reforms need to be pursued even more intensively in order to restore our competitiveness and boost the growth potential and the job creation capacity of uh, our economies. Reforms of uh, labor and uh, product markets uh, and pension systems uh, that support uh, growth and uh, job creation would in turn reduce uh, pressures uh, on uh, unemployment uh, and uh, public uh, finances. And that's why a credible medium-term fiscal strategy and a comprehensive uh, concrete uh, set of uh, structural reforms uh, complement uh, each other. This is crucial for France, uh, for Italy, for Spain, for Belgium, for Finland, uh, and uh, many other EU member states, uh, if not uh, all EU member states. In other words, uh, giving more time for certain member states, uh, as uh, the Commission has uh, proposed, uh, to meet their agreed uh, objectives uh, should now enable them to accelerate, uh, to intensify efforts uh, to carry out uh, overdue economic uh, reforms. Of course, uh, I'm fully aware that uh, structural reforms uh, are politically difficult. Uh, that's why I want to make a strong call to the member states uh, in the Council, knowing that uh, many, if not most, of the EPP parties uh, are members of uh, or part of uh, the national governments. Uh, I want to make a strong call to the member states uh, in the Council to concentrate on uh, exerting peer pressure for everybody to act uh, accordingly, according to the recommendations uh, and reform their economies uh, and uh, not uh, concentrate uh, on watering down their own recommendations uh, as uh, too often in the past. Why is that? Uh, because we need to adopt uh, a sense of common interest uh, and uh, common concern when discussing our economic policies uh, in the Eurozone or in the European Union in its uh, entirety. Lack of reforms uh, in one member state uh, has a negative effect uh, on other member states uh, as well. And I'm looking forward uh, to a truly collegial policy process uh, in the Council and in the Parliament uh, over the coming weeks. In fact, uh, the combination of uh, fiscal consolidation and uh, serious structural reforms uh, has uh, proven to be a winning receipt. We have uh, concrete cases in point uh, of this, uh, and I want to comment uh, especially 
Ireland uh, and uh, Latvia, who have uh, pursued uh, a successful transformation of their economies uh, over the past years uh, in the most difficult of uh, circumstances. The work is uh, never finished, uh, of course, uh, but uh, the examples of uh, Ireland uh, and uh, Latvia demonstrate uh, that uh, unwavering efforts uh, can make uh, the benefits of reform materialize uh, even earlier than uh, predicted. The convergence reports uh, by the Commission and uh, the ECB presented uh, on Wednesday on uh, Latvia are probably the best uh, evidence uh, of this uh, progress. Uh, according to our assessment, uh, Latvia should join the euro area from the beginning of uh, next year, 2014. And uh, therefore, as I know that uh, Prime Minister Valdis uh, Dombrovskis uh, will contribute in this uh, conference uh, later on, let me congr congratulate uh, Latvia's uh, Prime Minister Valdis uh, Dombrovskis uh, for this uh, achievement, uh, even though I recognize the Council's uh, last word uh, on the matter. Ladies and gentlemen, before concluding, uh, let me make uh, some remarks uh, as regards uh, proposals that uh, Germany and uh, France uh, made uh, last week uh, concerning uh, the euro area economic uh, governance. Germany and France uh, last week uh, made uh, several proposals uh, to boost uh, competitiveness, uh, growth uh, and uh, jobs uh, in uh, Europe. I find it important uh, that uh, these two member states uh, put uh, such a strong emphasis uh, on uh, competitiveness uh, and uh, employment, uh, and I welcome many of the proposals. But uh, I'm also concerned about uh, some of the proposals uh, presented uh, with regard uh, to economic uh, governance. In many aspects, uh, they seem to suggest uh, that uh, the wheel should be reinvented. In this context, uh, I want to make a strong call for the community method uh, when building the economic and uh, monetary union and uh, further reinforcing Eurozone governance. Uh, Intergovernmentalism is uh, often called uh, pragmatism, but uh, how can something be, something be called uh, pragmatic uh, if it uh, doesn't uh, really work uh, or deliver? The community method is uh, proven. It, uh, it's the method that makes uh, the European Union tick uh, to work and uh, deliver and it's called uh, the European Union. And it is the community method uh, that makes uh, the European Union effective and uh, inclusive, also from the standpoint of uh, smaller member states. Let's not uh, give up uh, these uh, principles uh, nor practices. <coughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude. Uh, our challenge today is to overcome the crisis uh, and uh, build uh, solid foundations uh, for sustainable growth uh, and uh, job creation. It means uh, enhancing the competitiveness uh, of our economies, uh, leaning on uh, innovation and uh, skills, uh, and uh, embracing uh, the expanding world trade. It means uh, boosting productive investment uh, and uh, access to finance, uh, so that our businesses, uh, especially SMEs, uh, can create uh, prosperity and uh, increase uh, their payrolls, uh, create uh, jobs. It means uh, staying the course uh, of uh, fiscal consolidation because there is uh, no sustainable growth uh, without uh, sustainable public uh, finances. And it means uh, rebuilding our economic and uh, monetary union, which we are currently doing. In fact, uh, this is uh, all about uh, reforming the European social and uh, economic model, not uh, nostalgically clinging to the status quo, because that would mean a permanent uh, decline for Europe, not uh, dismantling the European model, because we believe in the combination of uh, entrepreneurial drive and uh, social justice, uh, but instead uh, genuinely reforming and uh, modernizing the European model of uh, social market economy. And dear friends, uh, I count on your support uh, for this uh, objective. Thank you very much.